This video is to demonstrate how I can tune the piano, in this case to tune one string, one note, using only a gentle motion of the lever and without the need to have hard strikes on the key to achieve uh, a stable tuning without the risk of the strings slipping. Uh, I have an app on my phone which is called Piano Meter. It's a professional tuning app which I like very much. The dial is indicating the number of cents uh, of the frequency of the string. Uh, the bars which are underneath are indicating the partials which can also be used for uh, fine tuning but in this case I'm only going to illustrate using the dial. So I have detuned C4 and the app is sitting on the string of the note of C4 and now I'm going to insert the rubber mute between the left and the middle string so I'm going to first of all tune the right string to the correct frequency. So with the lever at 11 o'clock and left-handed so I'm going to be pushing. If you're right-handed you would be pulling the lever. So gently lifting up and striking the note at the same time. You can see the needle gradually lifting. And I take it beyond the zero point because when I let the pressure off you can see it returns back. So gradually increasing and with experience you can learn how far to take it. I can usually take it about five cents high and you can see it's settled at plus one cent. So to bring the string to the final frequency I gently, very gently, ease back. 
Now I'm happy with that, it's sitting just above one, minus one cent. So, how do we know if that string is stable? Well, many tuners will hit this, the, the key hard to see whether it slips, but I don't like using that technique. Uh, remembering that many tuners have got a limited time and they come to tune a piano in a short times because they may have six uh, other tunings to do that day. Whereas in my case, tuning my own piano, uh, time is not of the essence. So I'm using this gentle technique and you can see it's still sitting there. However, to test that string, I'm going to use my fingers very gently and I'm going to push away from me and listen to see whether I can hear that make any change and then gently the other way I'm happy for that for now so now I move the mute to the left side and forgetting the app, I'm going to move the lever to tune the middle string to the right string. And that is done orally. And as you can hear, the middle string is, is well away from correct tuning. So I know I dropped the frequency, so I'm going to increase. I hear the beats starting to slow. The beats have stopped, but I keep pressure on. And now I hear it starting to beat the other way. So the frequency is too high, but I relax. Now I hear slight beating. So now I'm going to test which way should I move it? Should I move it? In to increase the frequency or should I drop it? So to test it, I push no change. Now I pull it towards me very gently and I hear it change. So that indicates that to get the correct frequencies between these two strings I lift it slightly in frequency. So Now I hear it beating, relax. And that's stable. I can hit it hard if I wish. It will not drop. So now I have the left string to tune and I remove the mute completely. Move the lever to tune the left string. Again, I know that it has to go increase. And it's in tune, but I lift it beyond it. I hear it beating. I relax still beating. How do I know what to do now? Do I increase? Do I decrease? I use the test again. I press it forward, no change. Again. No change. The note is in tune. Now, it depends whether you feel that you want to get notes as close to dead on the frequency or if you're happy with it being 
One cent, half a cent. In my case, I'm happy just now like that because I've demonstrated how to stabilize. Um, I could continue and repeat the exercise without detuning, just go back to muting so that I'm going to tune just the right hand side. You can see it's low slightly, but now I lift it slightly. Let go. Test it. Mute. The left, so that I'm tuning the middle one. No beating. Remove. Slight beating. We know that it, it's going to be the left string to lift slightly. We hear it beating. No beating. So now we've moved it slightly up. And that is the end of my, my demonstration. I find it uh, adequate for my purposes. I can tune the whole piano in one hour. Um, I don't take the amount of time that I've taken to do this, but I wanted to make certain that uh, uh, I covered it uh, in, uh, in detail. But normally, um, with experience, the push and pull can actually be, sorry, the testing motion can be done during the actual tune, tuning of each string. So you don't have to have um, two actions to carry out, just, just one. If the unison start going out, as they will, after heavy playing or after a few days, temperature, humidity change, you can go straight to the note and you can quickly, without the app, find out by doing that which string needs tuned. And without the app, you can go straight to that particular string. Using the test, find out which way did it slip? Did it go up? Did it go down by the push or the pull? And you can correct it. Now, notice I'm saying very gently because the last thing that you want to do is to risk bending any of the pins. And many technicians will tell you never to use this technique. But uh, what I'm saying is that this is a very, very gentle thing. Now, what is happening? When we pull, sorry, when we have a torque on the pin and we move to clockwise, we're increasing the tension. Firstly, the tension is increasing in the non-speaking length, this part here. There is friction in the agraph, or if you have a, a capo bar, it's friction over that bar that means that the, the tension between the top non-speaking length and the tension on the bottom speaking length is different. It has to be because friction is causing that. So the first thing that happens is that the tension increases sufficiently to overcome static friction, which is on the, um, the graph. Then the string, which on, on the, the speaking length, will move. And as it moves, it increases its tension. When you relax the torque on the pin, the friction which is still at the agraph remains and the tension 
on the non-speaking length lowers as you remove the torque. Because of the friction, the tension in the speaking length does not change. This means that you are left with two different tensions. Now here is the danger. Some pianos have uh, old felt underneath the non-speaking length where the strings can bind to that felt. Also, the capo bar, not the agar, but the capo bar, can be very round. And when it's round, there's a lot of area for friction, static friction to occur. Uh, this is the cause that uh, makes difficulty in tuning. You notice that I'm referring to friction at these points and not friction between the pin and the uh, pin board. I don't have problems with sticking pins on this piano. They're very smooth. Um, whether that's a function of the type of pin board which is used on Bluthners, uh, Steinway has a similar construction, um, or not, um, difficult for me to say. I'm very fortunate in the case that uh, I have very smooth moving pins. However, uh, the point I'm going to get to is that in order to improve difficult, uh, difficult uh, tunings of certain strings, uh, many technicians will lubricate the friction points on the capo bar or the agraf. And in many cases I've seen written that they are equalizing the tension between non-speaking length and speaking length. Um, in my opinion, this is uh, not a correct procedure because of the uh, stability requirement of strings. Um, if you uh, are equalizing the tension between non-speaking and speaking length and you hit the note hard, uh, it's going to change the tension on the speaking length and it may steal some tension from the non-speaking length thereby leaving them unequal but unequal in such a way that with humidity and temperature changes it may uh, it may uh, regain that tension at loss and leave the, str the speaking length string uh, at an incorrect tune. The method I have used whereby it already has differences of tension between speaking and uh, non-speaking length, the difference, uh, I'll rephrase that, the tuning in which it is left is such that there is enough tension difference between them that you can uh, change the tension up or down on the non-speaking length without affecting the tuning below. This is why I can push slightly and pull slightly without the speaking length frequency changing. Uh, there are quite technical uh, reasons why this uh, approach um, is good and it's not for this video for me to go into it but uh, I hope it has helped those uh, understand that it is possible to make tunings without uh, significant effort. Thank you.